Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Alexander Adamov, uh, and uh, I'm from Rantis, and Dan Lambert from Red Hat uh, will uh, tell you about a few use cases uh, related to cloud security. Uh, we'll, we'll play with Snort and Suricata IPS during this talk. And uh, when uh, discussing with Dan uh, the title for our presentation, uh, we agreed to include like open source to the title, uh, just to be accepted, for sure. Um, so what, what open source means actually for security? From my point, um, open source, the main thing uh, with open source is the transparency. So uh, everyone can see the code, so it can be, uh, your solution can be easily adopted by uh, any company, any organization, even government or special services. Uh, what's, what's wrong with targeted attacks? Why are they in the focus? Uh, my journey in security started 10 years ago with Kaspersky Lab, and uh, I and my team uh, were, lucky, were lucky enough to uh, participate in investigation uh, with the Stuxnet targeted attacks. Stuxnet is a targeted attack that uh, destroyed uh, nuclear enrichment facilities in Iran. Uh, it was designed, uh, supposedly designed by uh, United States and Israel Special Services. So uh, since that, I figured out that targeted attacks should be uh, in the focus when you consider, when you create uh, some appliances for enterprise security appliances. Uh, another thing that uh, came into my focus recently is uh, crypto lockers. So data encryption can be another thread that uh, can uh, drastically affect uh, the companies, the organizations, and clouds as well. Uh, recently, I and my colleague uh, went to investigation, forensic investigation, to a uh, Swedish telecom company, and we uh, found their Tesla Crypt uh, crypto locker. And my first question was to, to administrator was, uh, uh, do you have antivirus installed uh, in your company? And they said, of course, we, we have, uh, but why didn't check, why didn't uh, trigger the alert and uh, didn't block the attack? So the problem was that uh, the modern crypto lockers and uh, uh, APT advanced persistence threads, they use uh, quite uh, sophisticated uh, self-defense uh, protections and uh, uh, active method of protection. So they, they block antivirus solution and they use obfuscation to, uh, to hide uh, its malicious payload inside. So uh, finally, uh, we found the Tesla Crypt body, and uh, when I upload to Multiscanner, I figure out that only three antiviruses out of 57 uh, managed to detect. So uh, the solution I came to was uh, using signature-based uh, scanning uh, with behavioral analysis. Uh, in particular, we will use uh, network IDS IPS systems, and uh, in advance, we will uh, extend uh, our scanners with uh, sandbox solutions. Uh, please, then. Um, okay, so I'm gonna be talking about um, my experience looking into something called TAP as a service. Um, and I'll, I'll do a deep dive into how that works um, uh, with some implementation details. Um, and how you use it, how you install it. Um, then I'll show you two use cases, one with intrusion detection systems, uh, the use case Alex just mentioned, and a new one, which I think is very exciting, called uh, file extraction and malware analysis. This is where you take a file off the traffic stream and analyze it. Um, so uh, last year uh, in Vancouver, uh, I was, um, looking for a way to snoop traffic inside the cloud. And uh, at the time, uh, there wasn't much out there, but just emerging was various companies' uh, implementations of, of network uh, uh, monitoring or mirroring. Um, back then, uh, we looked, I looked at the uh, internal networks of uh, OpenStack, here's possibly a familiar diagram to many of you with the instance in the green circle at the top, the firewall, bridge, uh, Linux bridge right below it, QBR, et cetera, and the integration bridge. And um, I went over different ways you could, uh, different places you could insert 
a sniffer or tap into this network and it seemed like the integration bridge was the logical place because all the traffic goes through there and you can select which flows through the integration bridge you're particularly interested in. So um, Ericsson, about the same time, has, was just coming out with this nifty new uh, software called Tap as a Service. Um, since then, I've learned that Juniper has something, which Alex and Andrew will talk about, and uh, I guess even Intel has something now. Um, uh, since Ericsson came out first, it was the one that I started to uh, uh, look into and research and whatnot. Um, this particular uh, network sniffing mechanism is a neutron plug-in. Uh, it fits very nicely into it. Um, and, well, you can use it for uh, analytics, you know, checking, uh, getting stats on what traffic is going through uh, your network to your instances, for debugging, security, uh, what we'll be talking about, lawful intercept, um, you know, lawfully sniffing packets. Um, this uh, particular implementation, TAP as a Service, was built for OVS, but in fact it could be used in other uh, places. They made it in an extensible way. Um, you can snoop either direction or both, ingress, egress. Um, in, my case, in my situation, uh, in my uh, own tests, I did see a, a small performance degradation of between 8 and 17 um, percent. Probably more research, you know, more che sophisticated checking should be done to really uh, say that, but that, that is what I saw in my own cases. Um, and I encourage people to look at last year's OpenStack uh, 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 lecture from Ericsson for more details about this. Um, to install, uh, it's, uh, the way I did it was I, I'm using DevStack. Uh, I haven't tried it with RDO. Um, and I just add these lines here. Uh, this loads the latest tap as a service right off of GitHub. Um, one parameter of note, uh, you have to set this port security uh, in order to make sure that traffic with a, a MAC address not intended for the destination, that's your monitor, um, will actually get delivered. It won't happen without that uh, uh, port security uh, switch. Um, so yeah, it's pretty easy to install using local.conf in uh, DevStack. Um, so in uh, the last, uh, well, I guess right around the turn of the year, uh, they, uh, Ericsson developers um, put in uh, a Neutron CLI. Uh, in the demo I have, I'm using the, pro the previous CLI, so it won't look exactly like this, but the new Neutron CLI is, is, is uh, looks like what you see on the screen. Um, there's two um, important uh, concepts. Uh, the service is the monitor, and the flows are the sources which flow data into the monitor. So you could say have two or three instances which you wish to uh, monitor. Each one of those is a, can be represented as a flow. And then you have one instance, which is your IDS or something else. And each of the flows connect to it. Um, and what you do is you represent uh, uh, these services and flows, you demark their points in the network using uh, ports. Uh, and I'll show that in the demo. Um, so, uh, of the, now to the two uh, use cases um, and a demo. Um, so I, I uh, am going to, in this demo, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna create some flows and add them to a service, and I'll show you uh, traffic uh, gets redirected or mirrored to the uh, destination. Really kind of cool. Um, it's basically something like this, where you have the two blue boxes as represent instances, mirrored traffic, which can be captured by Snort, and in turn, uh, if it, um, execute a script to say, uh, set up a firewall or some such. Um, all right, let's get to this uh, video. Okay, so. Um, Right, so the first, uh, so I'm just going to first show with Nova List, and yes, I'm typing without any fingers. This is a recording. Uh, so there are, are three instances here. Um, if I recall correctly, the top one is the monitor, 
the middle one is the attacker, and the lower one, Cirrus, is the um, victim. So what I'm going to be doing, first I'll ping from the attacker to the victim, and then we'll see with TCP dump that those ping packets actually do arrive on the monitor, and then we'll do the same thing uh, with a um, Nmap uh, reconnaissance scan. I'll use a, a fin scan to, snoop all, to scan all the ports, and we'll see that Snort will uh, catch that. So um, first I uh, show that I've got a service already created. Again, this is the older CLI, but uh, Tap service list shows that there is one service created, and then there's the port. The port ID is of the first instance there. Um, now I'm going to get the ports of the attacker and the victim. That's what I'm doing here. It's a neutron port list, and I'm grepping the private IP address of those two uh, instances. Um, next. Um, I'm going to create those two flows. So this, I'll use tap flow create. You give it a name. Um, you associate a service with it. That's going to be who I'm sniffing, uh, who, where the traffic gets directed to, and then the ports that I just looked up. So we create, we're creating two flows here, one for each uh, instance. Um, all right, so those two things have been created. Um, we can look at the flows with this nice command there. Okay, and there they are. Um, I probably shouldn't have given them both the same names. Uh, and then if you are good at uh, Neutron, you can use the OVS cuddle show and OF cuddle dump flows, and you can see that um, new flows were created. Now, uh, at this point, I'm switching over to a different instance. I'm gonna, I, I was on the um, bare metal machine. Now I'm getting onto uh, the attacker uh, instance, and all I'm gonna do here is ping that's the IP address of the uh, victim. Um, so yeah, I'm sending ping packets. Uh, now I'm jumping over to the, um, and this is just to show you that it actually is the IP address of the, of the monitor, and uh, do a TCP dump of, uh, uh, and you'll see that the pa ICMP packets are arriving. Um, yep, very nice. So it works really well. And then we do something similar, the same thing, only with Snort. Um, here you can see Snort is running. That's our intrusion detection system. Um, and it's reading off the ETH0 port. Uh, here I'm going to uh, watch the logs um, with the tail. Uh, here we go. And uh, I, on the other screen, which is not in this demo, I'm doing an Nmap minus lowercase f, capital F, uh, and boom, I get all these fin scans. So, this shows you that uh, we have a nice, uh, a nice working, and it's quite possible, and you know, uh, to uh, actually do intrusion detection in the cloud as of this time. So, um, what can you do next? Now that intrusion detection is a semi-solved problem, what's sort of the next thing to, to check out? Well, um, probably you've all heard about uh, the increasing popularity on amongst hackers of ransomware, where they'll actually get onto your system and encrypt all your data with a m massively com complicated encryption scheme, forcing you to pay them in bitcoins in order to um, uh, decrypt your data. And a lot of people have been hit by that. It's a good modest business model if you're a hacker. Um, so what can we do about this? Um, well, um, it's a malware attack. Uh, what do you do about with malware? You run virus scans and other things. So how can this fit into the cloud? All right, so the um, uh, Snort and similar uh, 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 intrusion detection systems do have a, uh, uh, a method of ext actually extracting files off traffic. So if you have a MIME attachment in an email, or if you're using, say, WGET, HTTP, uh, over the HTTP protocol, or even FTP, which hopefully you're not using FTP. Um, we have to pause this. Okay. Can you pause this?
Mm-hmm. Very good, thank you. Um, yeah, so yeah, you can extract the files right from the packets, and it's such a useful thing, because now you have the file, which is possibly uh, a hacker malware, and you can then uh, do some sort of analysis on it, static or dynamic. Static meaning you just, without running it, you check it out. Dynamic meaning as it's running, check it out. In a quarantine environment, quarantine means if it blows up and does bad things, it won't affect anybody else. And then you can tell the user, um, uh, yay or nay, this is a good file or this is a bad file. And the flow chart that I just described is, is below. Um, uh, Alexander is going to be talking about a different, a different way, which is a sort of where you have a sort of, in a way, a man in the middle uh, sniffer. Whereas I'm uh, mirroring the traffic, so um, this uh, payload will still reach the uh, destination instance. Um, and that, that can be perceived as either an advantage or a disadvantage. There's no uh, slowdown in terms of performance. The, pack, the payload instantly gets to the to destination, but in parallel, we've mirrored it to another instance which will do the virus scan. And how could we do this virus scan? Um, so there's a few different ways. Let me uh, go through these. Um, one would be to just run the executable and watch what happens on the machine. And for example, you could run an HIDS, host intrusion detection system, which does things like looks to see if any system files have been modified, um, or if any, uh, it can snoop, OSEC can, can parse other logs from other applications such as Snort. So if Snort detects that outgoing traffic to some place it shouldn't be going, OSEC will uh, parse that, read it, and can give you an alert. Um, it can snoop var log messages as well. Now what's really cool uh, is if you want to do this at scale, so let's say you're a corporation and you want to do this um, uh, at high scales, that is many, many payloads are coming in from all over the place, perhaps you could run this in a container and have uh, many containers uh, started and running. Um, and so I think this is a really cool area to explore that I'm looking forward to doing. Um, there, are, there are some hurdles here because, for example, uh, System Cuddle, the, um, the uh, services uh, daemon, doesn't run in a container easily. It's possible to run it, but it doesn't run by default. And there's a whole list of things like that. So, in fact, this would probably not give you perfect uh, 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 feelings of confidence that this, that this uh, file is uh, secure. Um, but you can't have 100% certainty anyway with a virus. All a virus scan will give you some level of confidence, but it, can't give you per it cannot give you perfect confidence. Another uh, popular virus scanning uh, open source solution is something called Cuckoo Box, and this is a dynamic uh, analysis uh, 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 analyzer, which will um, actually watch the uh, system calls which are being made and, and observe memory as the thing is running, looking for signatures or bad behavior. Uh, this is particularly good for uh, if you happen to be running Windows in the cloud. It's, it's great for that, I, I believe, from what I've read about it. And, um, it's also intelligent enough to uh, hide itself. So if the malware is um, uh, smart enough to say, hey, you're running in a virtual machine, or even in the future, you're running in a container, the um, cuckoo box will uh, uh, hide that. It's to make, so it's difficult for the malware to know that it's running inside of cuckoo box. So there's, that's, I think that's kind of interesting. Um, how could we do that in a container so that we could run it at scale? I think that uh, something like atomic, the atomic VM is something that's really going to be worth exploring, and, um, and we'll see. Um, another idea is to submit uh, the virus to a third party. Um, lots of cons with this idea. Um, so one is that a container would not, could not probably be exactly the same as uh, the uh, instance that you're, that you're verifying it for. 
Um, uh, so of course, the, the malware might be able to know that you're inside of a container. I think this is an important one. The user has to somehow wait for this processing to be completed, and so you need some coordination between the target instance uh, to wait for the um, analysis to finish. And that gets to the other solution, which is a, uh, having a VM right in front of the, um, of the uh, target instance, which will, and then the user has to wait for the analysis to complete. Um, so this is what I'm thinking about prototyping. Um, all right, so that's intrusion detection and um, uh, malware analysis. Um, now I'll turn it back over to Alex. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, actually, I have a demo about this uh, Cuckoo sandbox, so I will show you so the main thing with uh, Cuckoo. Okay, uh, so I'm going to use uh, IPS as a virtual network function. Uh, to create a demo environment, I use two ingredients. Uh, the first one is the Fuel. This is an OpenStack uh, deployment service. And the good thing is that it has a Fuel Contrail plugin, which, ha which will help me to deploy uh, Contrail, uh, Open Contrail SDN on top of my OpenStack. Uh, here, here you can see uh, the deployed uh, Contrail uh, made by Juniper. It's open source as well. So uh, to enable uh, service chaining, I'm going to first create a service template, a service template for my uh, IPS. I need to choose a service mode. I'm going to use in-network. It's kind of a, a road mode. And uh, firewall service type means I need two, at least two interfaces, uh, left and right. Uh, if you want to uh, manage this uh, uh, IPS virtual function uh, separately, you need to add management interface as well, but it's not necessary. So in this uh, case, I use only two interfaces, left and right. Uh, then I need to create actually service instances. Um, I type the name, I need to select a service template, and uh, uh, then I need to assign uh, both interfaces to the networks I'm going to monitor traffic uh, between. So uh, I'm going to monitor traffic between internal and external networks. So the attacker will be, here you can see uh, the network topology. Attacker will be in external network and uh, my host, my virtual machine will be in internal network. Then I create this instance. As you can see, I have this instance running uh, in the dashboard. Uh, to show you demo, I need one more instance. It will be a VM I'm going to protect. So I'm use some test VM uh, template, and I will connect it to Net04, which is internal network, a network that I'm going to protect against attack. And uh, the server, the malicious server, uh, is located in external network, net 4 x So finally, I have. Uh, my instance running, and uh, I have uh, my VM is, ru uh, is ru running as well. Next, uh, the thing which I used to forget to do, uh, you need to assign policy to uh, your networks. So a policy uh, will tell Contrail uh, what traffic exactly you want to uh, steer to your uh, service instance. It's very important. So I'm going to check the traffic between internal network, net04, and uh, external network, net 4 x So I, have, uh, I need to assign this policy to both uh, networks, to external and to internal. So now controls, uh, Contrail knows that uh, it needs to uh, steer the traffic uh, to my service instance. Then uh, I'm going to switch to a uh, service instance, which, is, uh, which has name IPS instance 01. Uh, here you can see the topology. So uh, as you can see, this is this my instance that connects uh, to, to networks. And uh, of course, uh, you need to set up uh, routing uh, on this instance. So the traffic will, will be forwarded uh, correctly from uh, between two, two networks. So I open uh, a console. Uh, just to check uh, if I can see, uh, yeah, this, this is my VM, Cirrus, 
And this is uh, IPS uh, instance. So let me log in. Uh, first thing, uh, I need to check uh, if I have uh, network interfaces properly configured. So uh, interface uh, Ethernet 0 is uh, connected to, to internal network and uh, Ethernet 1 is to external. Then I uh, do TCP dump to see if the traffic is really redirected to IPS instance. So I ping and I see my TCP dump catch these pings. Uh, next, I start uh, Suricata. Suricata is another open source um, IPS, intrusion prevention system, sometimes called IDS. Uh, in order to enable uh, Suricata, I need to create rules. So here I have four rules. The first one is test rule to check alarm word in HTTP traffic, and the three others is uh, to uh, detect uh, executables, Windows and Linux executables. So I uh, load the test file, and I see that my Suricata correctly notifies me about that. Then I download Linux Scripter. Uh, Linux Scripter is a kind of targeted attack. As you can see, it, it's, it was correctly uh, identified. Uh, Linux Scripter ta 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 targets uh, web, service, uh, web servers. It encrypts uh, MySQL and Jinx and Apache folders with data. And third one is Tesla Crypt. It's a Windows Crypto Locker. Uh, I already mentioned it. And the third file is PlugX. PlugX is a Windows backdoor, uh, one of the most popular uh, backdoor uh, software which is used uh, in targeted attacks. So the thing is Suricata can extract uh, executable files that I specify in my rules. So here you can see folder with extracted files and uh, you can see it has metadata which defines what kind of file uh, it, it uh, was extracted. The file name, source, destination, and it's important, MD5. So using MD5, you can search, for example, uh, on the internet to find more information about the sample. I like VirusTotal, I mentioned it's like multi-scanner uh, owned recently by Google. Uh, I put MD5 here. Uh, just to get the verdict uh, from 57 antivirus, and I see it's, it, it is uh, detected by 31 of them. As, as I said, uh, initially when I submitted some sample, th this sample first, it was detected only by three antiviruses. So that's kind of complicated. And we need to solve this uh, problem, and this problem can be solved with behavioral analysis. Uh, virus total um, enables cuckoo sandbox. Uh, you can see this short report is actually produced by Cuckoo Sandbox, and you can see even the folder C slash Cuckoo. So you can even recognize that this uh, report was generated by Cuckoo Sandbox. And here you can see uh, two files, the source and destination. Destination has extra extension .abc. This is a sign that your file has been encrypted by CryptoLocker. The interesting thing, you can find HTTP traffic uh, in your Sandbox report. So here you can see a ping, so-called ping message or chicken request to remote server. It, it, uh, this is an AES encrypted message, which uh, includes a, a Bitcoin address where, where a victim should pay the money. Another thing is malware.com, another sandbox. It is based only, uh, also uh, based on, uh, it is based also on uh, Cuckoo Sandbox engine. Uh, it's online, so you can use it for free. Uh, so there is no such sample in the database, so I need to upload. And of course, you need to uh, have some basic arithmetic skills to use malware, malware.com. And yeah, the bad thing with uh, behavioral analysis and sandboxing is that it takes time. It's not uh, like um, it will not generate your immediate verdict, so it needs to run it in uh, isolated environment in virtual machine, and then it says, okay, is it malware, is it malicious or not? So uh, after five minutes, I get my report. So I click, click on the link. Looking forward to seeing the report from Cuckoo. Um, yeah, there are several sections. Static analysis, behavioral analysis, network analysis, drop files, and so on. Um, so it depends what you're looking for. And uh, the interesting thing is uh, it also generates some behavioral signatures. So it says, okay, it performs some HTTP requests. Hmm. It also contains screenshots 
uh, as you can see. And uh, uh, this current shows actually shows you the message that your files have been encrypted. And uh, there is no chance to decrypt them because they use RSA to, uh, 2048. Actually, they, they lied. They, uh, they didn't use RSA. They use uh, AES and Watson encryption standard, just simple symmetric uh, cryptography with the key lens uh, 256. Domains, uh, which were instructed from the dumps, from the memory dumps, I believe. And uh, these domains can be used as an indicator of compromise. So you can uh, teach your IPS or IDS to block connections to, this, to those domains. Dropped files are uh, here, we'll see encrypted files. Uh, as I said, all encrypted files by Tesla Crypt, they, they have this .abc extension, like second extension. Of course, it's, it's not uh, really useful information, but uh, it shows like um, the crypto locker uh, worked in the uh, sandbox environment well. So uh, I was not happy with the uh, Google sandbox. That's why I created my own sandbox. Uh, this is my PhD project. Uh, so it, 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 it contains some extra features that uh, uh, Google sandbox uh, has no, unfortunately. So it provides also dynamic analysis uh, it uh, shows you uh, dumps. That, that is what uh, Cuckoo Sandbox uh, uh, lacks in, 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 in its implementation. Uh, also, uh, almost all sandboxes, they uh, contain uh, a very different multi-scanner from VirusTotal usually. I uh, included also a Yara pickup uh, engine, uh, Yara engine to detect uh, pickup files, to detect processes, to detect files. So Yara is a kind of standard for, for creating signatures for, uh, among antivirus industries. As well, we can see URLs, requests, and the good thing is you can open this HTTP request and see, okay, this uh, packet, for example, shows that a uh, chicken request was accepted by server and the information from the victim was added into, inserted, inserted into the database. Uh, that's the story. Uh, about uh, how you can uh, extend your simple signature-based uh, detection uh, software like IDS, IPS with some more advanced with behavior analysis with uh, sandboxing. Um, thank you very much. Uh, your question, please. Mm. Fake applause. <laughs> Actually, I have one question. Yes, please. On the other side. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, you used uh, Tab as a service, and you uh, told about performance degradation. Uh, is there any notable uh, performance degradation when you used uh, the V router as what you did? Uh, actually, uh, as for V router, I didn't measure performance. Uh, so that, uh, but the good thing with the router that uh, Contrail uh, supports uh, DPDK, so you can install DPDK on compute node to speed up, and you can also set up your IPS uh, with uh, using uh, uh, AFINet or uh, PFRIN if you if you support this. Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe some comments from Dan about the service performance. Um, when you do uh, port mirroring, I'm, I I have seen. Uh, degradation in performance, but I haven't quantified it. Um, and so I want to be careful in that these are just my own observations. I haven't, uh, so it, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to say that I, those are confirmed numbers. Okay. Well, that's an answer. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And if no more question, thank you. One more time, and have a nice evening at the Stakelight Party. Stick, stick, city. <laughs>